state in the lab, there are prisoners so dangerous and so disruptive that they need to be shut away. Shut away in a maximum security prison. This isn't a prison that the inmates run. We run this prison. Inmates who get sent to a supermax facility, like Minnesota's Oak Park Heights, are the baddest of the bad. Here, every inmate's movement is observed in the electronic nerve center of the prison. Send the passenger down, two rear, one staff, one inmate. In this supermax, prisoners step out of line at their own peril. But they can be out of their cells from dawn to dusk if they agree to be rehabilitated. To us, it makes good sense to try to do everything we can to change the behavior that brought them here. At Oklahoma's Supermax facility, H unit, the main method of control is containment. Prisoners live in a subterranean world, locked down in their cells 23 hours a day. As far as rehabilitation, I, I don't really do a whole lot of worrying with that. If he has a weapon, we'll use our electronic shield, which puts out 50,000 volts. Maximum security prison how to contain and control America's most dangerous criminals. Oklahoma's answer was to open H-Unit in 1991, located near the Midwest town of McAllister. No one's ever escaped from this institution. It is a multi-walled cement structured building. It's underground. There's a lot of dirt around the outside perimeter of it. Never say never, but it would be highly difficult for somebody to, uh, to get out of H unit. You are literally underground. You can see no trees, no grass. You can see no land horizons. You cannot see any sunsets. You cannot see any sunrises. You're buried alive in an underground cell, 23 and 24 hours a day. Oh, well, I wouldn't say buried alive, but it is hard. It's hard time. There's no, there's no way around that, but it's meant to be hard time. Yeah, you get used to it. It's like an animal in a cage kind of gets used to his cage. That's all this is. You know what I mean? An animal in a cage, that's all. H unit was built adjacent to the main prison complex here at Oklahoma State Penitentiary after 100 inmates went on a rampage in December 1985. Three guards were stabbed and seven others held hostage for 18 hours. We had some officers that received serious injuries, uh, physical injuries that lasted them the rest of their lives. Uh, we learned a lot there that we needed stricter control of the, of the bad, baddest of the bad inmate population, that we had total control of their movement to and from the areas that they had to go to. What that means is that nothing is left to chance here. Whenever an inmate leaves his cell unit, there are always two guards present. And no matter how short the journey, a thorough search of all clothing for weapons and contraband is always conducted. The inmate has 24 hours a day to figure out something to try to manipulate you with. It's real easy to become complacent uh, because of, the, of all the security down there. You, you think you're safe beyond safe, and uh, one mistake could cost you your life. Outer. 
it's virtually a non-contact unit for staff. Uh, we can move an inmate to the shower, to the to the yard, and with without ever being face to face with that inmate without bars between us. Double murderer Teddy Wilkins has only a short distance to walk to the yard for his daily hour of exercise. But he's still restrained with handcuffs behind his back and leg irons on his ankles. I came in with 12 years. You know, I caught all this time in the penitentiary, man. You know, so I didn't kill nobody on the streets. Teddy Wilkins was jailed for an armed holdup, but life on the inside can exact its own sentence. He's now serving two life terms and a further 60 years imprisonment for murdering two inmates at two different prisons. Self-defense. They, uh, I had had issue with a, another convict, and uh, it went it went all the way. That's. I'm not proud of. I'm not happy about it. Just something done. I don't regret it neither. I did what I felt I had to do. I'm not a kill freak or anything. In this supermax, high security risk prisoners have no direct contact with any other person other than guards, ever. I think uh, this whole solitary thing makes it worse because when I went out of state and I was around people, I didn't know how to react to conversate with them. When they said something, I would take it wrong. We don't ask them to come here. The, with their mis misbehavior and management problems, they earn their way here. Danny. The most troublesome prisoners right. are housed in the administrative segregation unit. Here, cell counts are done up to 10 times a day. Three of the 50 inmates are on suicide watches every 15 minutes. Let me do my count first. Some of these are very bad. Um, we got guys over here that have killed their cell partners. Watch. When we do our daily counts, they are known to throw stuff on you. Uh, urine, feces. Um, Mixture of both, it just depends. We got to make sure that there's nothing that the individual can have in their hands or anything like that that can possibly cause harm to the officers on the run. They can make a weapon out of just about anything. They can take a tray. They're served a tray, it's a plastic tray. They can heat that up and then uh, cut them a piece of plastic out of that tray in the shape of a, a knife, pointed tip on it. Take the plastic toothbrush, melt the end of it and get it hot, and then take the, the end out of a uh, razor that they're allowed to have for shaving purposes. Take that little razor and insert it in that hot plastic tip of the toothbrush. Obviously, that razor you can cut real easy with that. There have been six stabbings and one cell murder during the past two years in HU. A casualty rate the prison management says is not helped by budget pressures that force the majority of prisoners, unless they're in the segregation unit, to be double celled. We try to screen to make sure that we don't have inmates, enemies in cells together. Sometimes they create an enemy just by being locked in a cell with him. We, we try to separate those, but we, we can't be 100% successful at that. Oh, uh, no, that's, that's another story. I've, I've had some inmates in my cell that's, that's, I don't know, I think they were placed there uh, strategically to maybe cause harm or to get me to go off on them or something. And uh, some of them was the, some of them was very bad.
Johnny Tallbear, serving a life sentence without parole for murder, has just been released back to the general population of the prison after three years in H unit. I describe H unit as barbaric and heinous. It's a unit that should not have ever been built, not here anywhere in the United States of America. Life inside H unit can be a living hell for those inmates who can't handle this level of control. Each unit has an electronic nerve center. No cell door opens without its involvement, and no human movement happens without its being aware. Despite the control in this prison, though, inmates still find their own ways to connect with each other. They even have their own sign language. These prisoners may be denied human contact. They may be denied fresh air and sunlight. They may be denied most of the things that make us human. But they still find a way to survive the restrictions they face every day. 